Hi, uh, yeah, so my name's Tom. Um, I'm a front end web developer at a company called With Associates. Um, we're a digital agency based in, uh, up in Hackney, and we make sort of websites and apps and other webby stuff like that. Um, and my talk today is going to be pretty short. Um, essentially, just going to be running through my first Ember app. You know, I, I'm, I'm reasonably new to Ember, I've been coming to the meetups for a little while. Um, but yeah, it's, it's my first Ember app. Ember app that I've worked on from the beginning and it's gone into production. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, reasons for choosing Ember, um, some of the design decisions behind the apps, uh, some things I liked about Ember and that I found useful, and also some things that I found a bit tricky or that tripped me up a bit. Um, so quick bit of background about the project. Um, we worked with an artist, illustrator, author called Marion Duchard. Um, you may have seen her work around. If not, check it out. It's really cool. Um, and we basically we made a promo uh, site for her book series, which is called Let's Make Some Great Art. Um, and these are sort of uh, beautifully drawn, fun activity books for kids. Um, you know, um, and so along with the promo site, we made some sort of uh, web-based drawing apps, which were essentially digital versions of the activities in the books. Um, we made a bunch of prototypes, and some were pretty silly, but we picked three and built them, and they looked a little bit like this. Um, there's no, not using any framework there. It was just sort of vanilla JavaScript and a little bit of jQuery, um, and some sort of custom scaffolding around which they're built. Um, but they worked pretty well, and uh, people used them, and they used them quite creatively to make stuff like this, which is a sort of punk rock monster with a big <laughs> bogey hanging out of the nose, and this sort of relaxing beach scene, and this kind of fashionable cowboy with a nice shirt, and a turtle being sick. Um, <laughs> but so those all looked really nice, but the problem is the code looked uh, a bit like this. Um, you know, it's just one big long file uh, with no comments or documentation and some sort of bizarre naming schemes and decisions in there. And really, I was the only person that fully understood it because I built most of it. So maintaining and iterating on it wasn't that fun. So when Marion came to us and asked if we could make some more changes so that she'd be able to use um, the apps in an exhibition she was having up in Scotland where the kids would sort of be drawing on iPads in, in the exhibition space. Um, I was a little bit worried and I looked at this code and my face looked a bit like this. Um, so I decided to sort of uh, learn a bit of Ember and rebuild, rebuild it in Ember rather than sort of digging through the old code and trying to uh, trying to bludgeon it in there. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's not really modeling much data or anything like that. So it's not exactly a prime candidate for a full-on framework like Ember. But I think there's plenty to Ember that makes uh, developing any kind of front-end application really nice. Um, so why, why Ember? Well. I wanted a code base that was easy to maintain and iterate on, unlike the previous one. Um, and that meant having some structure and conventions. And I didn't want to have to plan these out myself in advance or sort of retroactively try and fit them in. Um, so Ember's good for that. Um, I wanted to make use of the work of plenty of smart people who worked on Ember, um, which left me to do just the fun bits, like the, the drawing code and stuff like that. Um, and so this is the, the Ember version. It looks very similar. Uh, it's got some new design elements and some different buttons and stuff like that. Um, and it didn't take too long to port across. Um, there wasn't a huge amount of code reuse. Um, but now it's iterating on this and maintaining it is really easy. If we want to add in um, some new functionality, like a new modal or a new button that does something else. It's just a case of adding in a, another component. Um, so some of the stuff that I liked about Ember, 
components. Components are really cool. Um, sort of tidy units of functionality that do one thing uh, well. And um, they're supposed to be reusable where possible. Um, I, I've, I didn't worry too much about that because uh, I think they're really great for just uh, packaging up any sort of nice tidy unit of code, whether it's particularly reusable elsewhere or not. Um, and they're really simple and obvious. It's sort of one JavaScript file and maybe a handlebars file. Um, so it's a good way to keep your code nice and tidy. Um, so this is just a simple uh, component that we use in it, uh, which is just an overlay. Uh, it's got some content in between the handlebars tags that that we want to show at a certain point, and the is visible flag is um, is just a, it's a computed property on the um, controller to say when the overlay should show. And so in the JavaScript, it just looks like this. There's uh, another computed property there, which just sets the display CSS to block or none, depending on whether we want the the component the overlay to show. Um, but one thing I found a little bit difficult or a, a little bit confusing with components was how to get a component to do something for you on command. Um, this, is, this is the sort of main interface for interacting from a parent view into co a component and back, um, which is just basically a bunch of sort of shared data bindings. Um, so I think what you're supposed to do is make the data available all the time across these bindings that you want the parent view to be able to interact with. But that was a bit tricky with the canvas component because the data I wanted to send back up was uh, you know, a computed PNG data URL, which on the iPads it took about uh, a second to compute that and during that time the interface locked up. So I really only wanted to do that under specific uh, scenarios when the user clicked save or something like that. Um, I'm still not really sure the best way to do this, but we opted for a, an in-between way, which is basically um, this function update value gets debounced when uh, the mouse up or the touch end happens. Uh, and then if the user starts drawing again during that half second, um, it will just cancel updating that value. Um, yeah, and components uh, like views, they have access to all the the interaction events, uh, like touch events, and um, you know this isn't really Ember specific, really, but I uh, thought it might be nice to just run through it quickly in case anybody's interested. Um, so in the component, you can just uh, alias the the mouse methods to the uh, the touch events, um, but you have to do a little bit of work to get to get sort of compatible uh, event data through that. Um, so for a single touch, it's quite easy because you can just do um, the, the mouse event or the touch event. Um, but for multiple touches, which we wanted so that you can draw with lots of fingers, um, it's a bit tricky because you have to uh, keep track of the, the changed touches through uh, an ID like that. Um, uh, one other thing about, uh, com uh, sorry, one other thing about components and events is that Unlike jQuery or plain JavaScript, where uh, your event handler, the context is going to be the DOM element, in it, in a component, it will be the component or the view, which you know is fine once you get used to it. But it tripped me up a couple of times when I was porting code across. Um, and then another thing, services—they're not really the most exciting bit of Ember, but um, I think they could be useful for all kinds of things. Um, a good use case that I came across was for doing responsive interfaces, where you can obviously do a lot with just CSS, but there might be times that you want uh, you know, your controller or some logic in a component to know what, what the viewport is like, to you know, hide or show some specific uh, interface or do things differently. Um, so this is a really simple uh, viewport service that's in there. Um, which just gets the window width and height, and it's got computed property whether the viewport is a mobile device, and then it's getting injected into the component and the controllers um, so that we can use it in there, 
like this in the template where I'm I'm only showing certain uh, user interface component uh, user interface elements when uh, it's on a mobile device, and also in the the canvas component where I I'm using some CSS properties to zoom out so it's not kind of massive on the screen. Um, so it's useful to know that in there too. Um, the other thing that's cool, M Ember App Kit or Ember CLI now. Um, when I was building this, uh, CLI wasn't quite ready, so I used Ember App Kit, um, which was really cool. Um, got lots of fun stuff in it. Uh, but for me, as a, as a beginner learning Ember, all the stuff around the Ember code, like the uh, ES6 transpiler and broccoli and Bower and uh, you know NPM, if you're not familiar with those things at all, then that can be kind of daunting, um, just getting to the Ember specific stuff. And uh, to compare with my single JavaScript file at the beginning, the, the app kit tree looks like this, which is also pretty daunting if you're, if you're new to Ember and you don't really know what's going on. But I think now this is really useful for keeping, keeping code um, separate, doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, and yeah, so my talk was supposed to be a short talk. So that's pretty much where it ends. But I just so show some photos of the, um, the apps in action. So this is setting up the iPads. This is the exhibition space. And uh, there's, there's some in use. And uh, some of my favorite drawings that came out of the exhibition. There's this cool guy in a red hat. Uh, nice stick lady. <laughs> um, Sort of rainbow bus, which I liked. Uh, Mona Lisa, clan, clan face on. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Um, and yeah, that's it. So thanks. So this viewport service up here, um, it's just got a, a, you can put a bunch of functions on it or it's, it, it'll essentially act like a, a global variable when you j inject it into here. So um, what we're doing is uh, in just injecting this, this uh, viewport service um, into the component and then in the component you can just access it. Um, as a property on the component itself, so dot viewport dot is mobile. But in your in your naming convention, if you're about to that screen, yep. you're injecting so app dot inject component obviously is where you're injecting it. Yes. But then viewport is viewport is the, the name of this uh, so this is uh, I'm a bit confused about the M uh, ES six transpiler, but this gets imported as viewport and then Sorry, service viewport, and then gets uh, injected into the component with this namespace. Okay. So, 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 so service viewport is the name in the actual container, and then viewport is the name it's exposed as in your What, what that's yeah. missing is where it registers. There's a lot of, there's a lot of the above the service, a lot of service where it registers that service as service viewport. Uh, in this example, that's probably not necessary, right? No, I, I just picked out these lines just to show how, it, how it's used in the app. I mean, well, uh, and then the resolver knows when you say service code on viewport, it will go and find that module, load it in, create an instance of it, and then inject then it in all right places. With that, with the namespace in the second argument? So that's the property name it will get on the target object. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, the before and after. Yes. Uh, did you have more or less code? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, 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 I reckon there's probably less code now. Um, there, well, that, yeah, there's less code now, but it's just split up a a bunch, amongst a bunch of different files. Um, 
for doing stuff like you, you see how easy the, the overlay component is when that was uh, written in jQuery. Um, uh, there's a lot of sort of like handling interaction events, and whereas on, uh, in the Ember version, it's just toggling a flag and it shows or it doesn't show. So, I mean, there's, there's obviously more code in the Ember version, but I've only written a small part of it. Yes, yeah. Um, uh, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, Jamie, but if I put the name of my component after this, it would just inject it into a specific component. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if it was component colon uh, x uh, overlay, then it yeah. would just inject it into overlays. Okay.